Hello and welcome to this microcap strategy monthly update for February 2022. My name is Matthew Martin and I'm a portfolio manager at Rivmont. Before we begin, I must mention that this presentation is for informational purposes only. This is not recommendations or investment advice. Um, Rivmont is the portfolio manager for the Rivmont microcap fund and the fund may own some of the positions that we will mention today and may trade on those stocks at any time without prior notice. So for February 2022, let's start with a snapshot of the Rivmont Microcap Fund. Uh, the fund had 14 million in assets under management and the monthly return for uh, February was minus 6%. So unfortunately, another uh, tough month for, for the fund and I will explain why in a minute. When we look at the benchmark, the benchmark was up 6% for the month. And in terms of concentration, we, we are at 36% invested in the top five holdings. So this is pretty consistent. Uh, every month we try to be around 40%. Now let's explain the returns a, a little bit. Um, first of all, it's, it's important to mention the divergence in sector allocation. Uh, this is something I've been talking about many times in the past. I don't want to repeat myself every month, but uh, it's important to understand that we're in an inflationary environment right now. And uh, that means uh, commodity prices are going up. Uh, we can think about oil, for example, that has been rising steadily since the beginning of the year. Um, so this is obviously very good for the energy sector. Uh, we're also seeing a good performance in the basic materials. You know, this, the, the, the benchmark is heavily exposed to those um, commodity sectors, while the Rivmont Microcap Fund is not. If we look at subsectors, uh, for example, if, if you go on the TSX website, you can look at uh, indices for subsectors. You, you can look at healthcare and technology, for example, and those two sectors were down six to seven percent for for the month of February, which is um, fairly comparable to uh, the performance of the fund for the month. Now, a question you may be asking yourself is, um, is it the right decision to 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 stay away from commodity uh, the commodity sectors when they are performing so well? Um, we think it, it's still the right decision in the long term for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, th those sectors are very cyclical, so it's very hard to make forecasts and to uh, to hold these companies for the long term. For example, if, if uh, the oil price go goes down 50% next year, um, probably most of the oil producers will start to lose money and. Um, Basically, we won't be able to hold these companies in the fund because we typically look for companies that are profitable. It's, it's, it's very challenging to hold these companies for the long term. So for us, we feel it's just better to find high quality uh, companies in the technology and healthcare sectors that we can hold for maybe five to ten years. The second thing is that um, Commodity uh, producers are very challenging to to evaluate. Uh, it, it's it, it 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 requires a totally different skill set to evaluate. For example, a mining project or an oil pr producing asset uh, compared to a software company, for example. And frankly, we just don't have this expertise at, at Rivmont, and we feel we wouldn't do a good job of investing in those sectors. In the long term, we think that over uh, com uh, a complete uh, economic cycle, uh, our strategy should do better without the, the exposure to commodities. The second thing that's important to mention is the overall volatility in the markets. Uh, we've seen, for example, the large US indices, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, uh, which uh, have uh, lost about 8 to 12 percent since the beginning of the year. So uh, we're, we're, we're starting to see a correction across the board now and uh, unfortunately this is not a good environment for microcaps because uh, microcaps are the riskiest asset class uh, when, when you think about stocks and when people are 
um, cautious or are, are trying to uh, reduce the risk in their portfolio, they will typically sell the micro caps first. Um, so w when we see volatility uh, like we, we're seeing right now, um, typically it's not fav favorable for the sector. But on the other hand, uh, when we see a, a new uptrend uh, starting to form, Typically, the microcaps will be the first one to go up because people want to take more risk and want to try to generate better returns. So hopefully, uh, we'll be the first uh, asset class out, out of this correction. Now, in terms of outlook, um, well, the first question you might be asking yourself is when will we, will we see a reversal in the downtrend that we're seeing right now? We've, seen, we've been seeing a downtrend since about a year now in Canadian microcaps. Uh, it's, it's really hard to predict when we will see the reversal, but one thing we know for sure is that um, the valuations right now are very reasonable. We're seeing a lot of bargains. Um, uh, not, not only in terms of uh, a comparison to large caps, but also in historical terms. If, if we look at micro caps in the past, um, valuations right now have rarely been so attractive. Um, and I'm speaking by experience. I, I've been uh, investing in the sector for over eight years and I've rarely seen such a good opportunity, opportunity set as uh, what we're seeing right now. The second thing is that, actually it might sound obvious, but the more the stocks decline, the better the future return prospects are. As, as long as we hold companies that are still growing their revenues and profits, um, when these stock prices go down, it means the valuation is getting more reasonable and it, that sets us up for better returns in the future. I'll give you an example. If we own a company that is trading at one times revenue and next year they grow their revenue by let's say 30 percent the company should be worth 30 percent more but also maybe the market will assign a better revenue multiple to the company so if the multiple expands to two times revenue uh, then we we double our money on top of the 30 percent growth in revenues so when we start from very low valuations, we have the double whammy of being able to generate returns on uh, the, the business growth, but also the valuation growth. So this is the, the best setup for long-term outperformance. Now a few other highlights. Um, I gave you an update last month about the private companies in our portfolio. We, we've had uh, one position uh, that went public during February, it was Jasper Commerce, the ticker symbol is JPIM on the TSX Venture. The company began trading actually on the day that uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, so un unfortunate timing because uh, it was a very, very volatile day on the market and um, unfortunately the, the stock uh, had a, a, a rough start. They did their um, going public financing at 50 cents per share. The Rivmont Microcap Fund had paid 32 and a half cents per share uh, at the private level. So we had a good potential return to realize on the first day of trading, but unfortunately the, the stock went down to about 30 cents. Um, so uh, basically we're break even on that position for now. Um, in the context of the market, it, it's not a good result, but it's not a bad result either uh, to, to be able to break even on that position. And we still think that the return prospects are very good for the long term. Regarding the other private companies in the portfolio, we still have three remaining. Um, on two of them, we, has, we expect a, a liquidity event uh, to happen in the short term, so um, obviously we'll keep you posted as soon as we have news to share on that front. Finally, I'm very happy to report that the Rivmont team will be heading to a first in-person conference in over two years. 
uh, during the month of March, we'll be heading to the Alpha Nord Microcap Conference, where we will be able to meet with about 20 microcap companies uh, one to one uh, directly with the management teams. And also, uh, there will be about 50 investors there, so there will be plenty of opportunities to network with uh, other industry participants. And what's great about these in person events is that. Um, we meet companies, of course, but sometimes the best investment ideas come from the other participants, people that share with us their favorite uh, investment ideas of the moment. So really in terms of idea generation, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, those in-person events are, are great opportunities for us and, and we're very happy to be able to uh, go back in person again. So definitely we'll keep you posted about uh, how that went next month. So that's it for this monthly update. Uh, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me. Uh, my contact info is on the screen. And also you can visit uh, revmont.ca to find more information about the microcap strategy, but also other strategies offered by Rivemont. Um, thank you very much again, and uh, we'll talk to you next month.